Hello friends, in this video we'll be bringing another year of photo editing to a close as we count down the top 5 raw photo editors for 2021. Just like last year, I'll be editing the same photos and comparing the results. The difference is this time I was fortunate to be able to test more products than ever before, so the standard should be way higher than from the previous year. Before we begin, let's run through our updated criteria, which has been improved to better reflect what qualities a good raw editor should have. So here are the criteria. Number one is the quality of tone adjustments. This is what makes or breaks a raw editor and the most important consideration when getting one. The raw processing should give pleasing results right out of the box, and it shouldn't take a million adjustments to get the look you want. Number two is local adjustment capability. This criteria is new for this year. The photo editor should allow for adjustments to be applied only on select portions of an image for a more refined adjustment. A number three is an intuitive user interface. The interface should be understandable without the need for a manual. It should also be fast and fluid. And number four is the price. The features you get should represent great value. Just like last year, to make comparisons fair, I'll be editing the same photos, mostly applying global tone adjustments. I won't resort to local adjustments or any other special editing most of the time. This will allow for an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of the basic performance of each editor. In the case I do use local adjustments, I'll indicate it and make sure to perform the same local adjustments across the board for all the editors. So without further ado, here are the top RAW editors for 2021. At number 5 is Luminar 4. Luminar was our champion in 2020, and it's about to get a new update with Luminar Neo in 2022. I'm really looking forward to that. So how did Luminar make it to this elite list? Well, it's through the quality of its tone adjustments, which unlike your run-of-the-mill RAW editor, are characterized by nice contrast, vivid color, and proper tone targeting, like the shadow adjustment doesn't spill over to unintended tones, like midtones and highlights, something lesser photo editors habitually do. Second, it has very capable AI-enabled tools, which simplify the workflow, like AI sky enhancement beautifies the skies, and AI accent autocorrects the tones in an image with just a single slider. Finally, its interface is well-designed and elegant. No problems learning the software at all. With those good features, why is Luminar not ranked higher? First, Luminar's masking brush lacks any edge detection at all. This cripples Luminar's usefulness for performing local adjustments, especially when the edit requires the creation of complex masks. Second, Luminar's output does have a tendency to produce unwanted halos as you can see here. It is not bad at all, but it is more prominent than its peers, and I'd rather it not be there. Third, its resulting colors may be on the unnaturally colorful side. And finally, Luminar's adjustments don't have as great a range as others in this list. This means it has difficulty recovering detail in very dark tones, particularly in JPEGs. So number four is On One Photo Raw 2021. On One recently released a newer update, so you will only see the On One Photo Raw 2022 on their website. I'm looking forward to trying that out. Also check out my recent On One Photo Raw review. I'll put the link in the description. So why is On One Photo Raw ranked higher than Luminar? First, On One's tone adjustments, in my opinion, are superior the colors produced are more natural looking with less visible halos than Luminar. Second, On One has a number of essential tools which perform better than Luminar, like its haze adjustment tool makes images pop better, and its structure adjustment produces less artifacts than Luminar's AI structure. Third, On One's local adjustments are better. As mentioned, Luminar's masking brush doesn't have edge detection, so it is a low bar to be better than Luminar. For masking, On One has a great implementation called AI Mask, which is one of my favorite tools. 
If you watch my review, you know that with AI Mask, you can simply doodle on parts of the image that need to be selected or not selected, and the AI will create the mask like magic. It's an amazing implementation. So what are the cons of ON1? I'll list four. First, the shadow adjustment is less precise than Luminar's as it will spill over to midtones and highlights. Second, the range of on one shadow adjustment is limited in recovering detail in very dark shadows. And third, on one's navigation is more complicated and less understandable than Luminar's. Fourth, the app UI is relatively laggy, which is also a problem of Luminar, by the way. So I don't use on one or Luminar to browse through thousands of photos. So here are some comparisons of edited photos from On1 and Luminar. At number 3 is Capture One Twenty One. I had the pleasure to review Capture One in my last video, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. So why is Capture One ranked higher than On One? Capture One beats On One on both the interface and the quality of its tone adjustments. Capture One's interface is more visually pleasing, easier to understand, and more responsive than On One's, which tends to be laggier. It takes less steps to do editing tasks in Capture One than on One. But what makes Capture One stand out is the quality of its raw processing. Really the best in raw editing. Capture One's adjustments are characterized by its natural color, precise targeting of tones, and great dynamic range. While on One struggles to recover detail in very dark shadows, Capture One doesn't break a sweat. And it does so with no artifacts and nice looking contrast. Capture One's local adjustments are also much better implemented than On One's. While both Capture One and On One support layers, Capture One differentiates itself through its masking, which is more intuitive. Its brush edge detection is fast and responsive, while On One's version, called Perfect Brush, is sluggish and jittery. So with all these great features of Capture One, what are its cons that prevent it from being number one? Well, mostly it's ultra expensive price. Capture One costs a whopping 319 US dollars. Second, some of its JPEG adjustments need some improvement. More about that in a moment. But first, here is a comparison of edited photos between Capture One and On One. At number two is Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom is the industry standard, which needs no introduction. Of course, Lightroom's excellent tool set is very well known. Its adjustment tools are excellent across the board and are characterized by natural color, great dynamic range, and precise targeting of tones. Capture One's tools are pretty good as well, so you might be surprised to know that Capture One I believe as many attributes that are comparable or even surpass Lightroom. For example, Capture One's raw adjustments produce better colors in my opinion, and it has a more elegant user interface. So why do I think Lightroom is better than Capture One? Where Lightroom clearly surpasses Capture One is in its JPEG performance. As mentioned previously, Capture One is not as good with JPEG as it is with RAW. Specifically, Lightroom is way smarter in its ability to recover highlights in JPEG images, as you can see here. Lightroom's highlight adjustment is unsurpassed in photo editing. Capture One's JPEG highlights adjustment 
turns highlights to an unpleasant gray, while Lightroom recovers details properly just like any other RAW file. It's really impressive. Another advantage of Lightroom is its JPEG noise reduction. As you can see here, it works great even in the noisiest image. Capture One's JPEG noise reduction is hard to describe, but suffice to say it doesn't work. Finally, Lightroom's subscription price is much cheaper than Capture One's. At $10 a month, that's 2.5 times less than Capture One's 25 USD price. So here are some comparison of edited photos between Lightroom and Capture One. So that brings us to number one, DxO Photo Lab 5. DxO Photo Lab 5 is made by DxO, a French company well known in photography. You might have heard of them as they used to own DxO Mark, that company which tests camera and lens quality. So they certainly know a thing about photography. So let's talk about the good points of DxO. First, let's talk about its raw processing. DxO's tone adjustments are characterized by vivid color and great dynamic range with precise tone targeting. Some people might say their colors are overly saturated, maybe, but you won't get a dull looking image from Photolab 5. In terms of adjusting highlights, it performs well for both RAW and JPEG. I would rank it second to Lightroom and it certainly performs better than Capture One's JPEG highlight adjustment. In terms of notable features, DxO features what I think is the best haze tool, which they call clear view. It works great in making dull images pop, and its results are far superior than anything from Lightroom or even Capture One. Its micro contrast tool is great as well. It's the equivalent of clarity, and it's excellent for improving local contrast. In terms of local adjustments, it has an excellent implementation. DxO Photo Lab 5 supports layers, and all its global adjustments work with local adjustments as well. In terms of creating masks, its brush edge detection, called AutoMask, is very good, and its brush is quite responsive. Its implementation, though, has a flaw in that its mask preview will not show the mask with the edges detected. So you might think that the edge detection doesn't work, but it actually does. Both Capture One and Lightroom properly preview the actual selection of the edges. That being said, its edge detection does work and is reliable. Still, in local adjustments, it has a workflow where you have a separate set of controls for local adjustment and global adjustment, so you never get confused which type of adjustments you are doing at any particular moment. In terms of the interface, it is well designed and easy to understand. It's much faster than ON1, but a step slower than Lightroom. So what are the disadvantages of DxO over Lightroom? First, Lightroom has the better tone adjustment performance because it features better contrast, more natural color, and greater dynamic range out of the box. There's less fiddling with adjustments in Lightroom as compared to DxO, which might require you to do extra work to correct color and contrast. Lightroom also has a much more fluid and intuitive interface and a larger feature set than DxO. So with all those good features of Lightroom, why is DxO at number one? Well, the answer is the price. As of this writing, DxO Photo Lab 5 costs 165 USD, one-time payment, which I certainly prefer, and that's 30% off the 210 USD standard price. So compare that to Lightroom's 120 USD subscription a year. Over a three-year period, DxO will cost less than half the price of Lightroom. So because of DxO's much lower price and its comparable performance to Lightroom, 
I'm happy to give the number one spot to DxO Photo Lab 5. So here are a comparison of edited photos from DxO Photo Lab 5 and Adobe Lightroom. So there you have it, the top 5 raw photo editors for 2021. I hope you enjoy that. I'm sure you can see all these photo editors give fantastic results. So congratulations to all of them. I can't wait to see the next evolution for their products in 2022. So did you agree or disagree with my selections? I'd love to hear from you. And let me know what your favorite raw editor is or if I missed any good raw editor, which I can include in my future lists. Finally, if you like this content, do help keep the videos coming by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And I thank you in advance for that. Until the next time, happy shooting and bye for now.